everywhere, people are paid differently for their work. What we are paid rewards skill, training and experience, as well as the types of work we do. But how big should those differences be between those at the top and the rest of us? And are very large pay gaps good for society and our economy? Let's focus on two people. Brenda is an experienced nurse in one of Britain's busiest hospitals. After several years moving up her pay scale, she earns £12 an hour, the average wage in the UK. Brian is the boss of one of Britain's biggest companies. He earns £1,200 an hour. That's a hundred times more than Brenda earns. In fact, that means Brian makes as much in just three days as Brenda earns in a whole year. Brenda struggles to get by on what she gets paid. Wages for average earners like Brenda have hardly changed in a decade. Whilst food prices are going up, gas and electricity bills are rising and rents are going through the roof. Brian, on the other hand, has seen his annual pay increase by two million pounds over the same decade. That means he now earns four times as much in one year as Brenda will in her entire life. Doesn't seem very fair, does it? The fact is, for the first time, most people in poverty in the UK are actually in work. Growing numbers of working people struggle to pay the bills and now resort to food banks just to survive. And as people on average incomes are increasingly squeezed, less money is spent in our high streets. The growing pay gap between pay at the top and pay for everyone else is bad for those who earn the least, bad for average workers like Brenda, and bad for Britain's economy. And all the while, people like Brian do better and better. But it doesn't have to be like this. Other modern, successful European countries have prosperous societies with all the new technology and consumer goods that we enjoy in the UK. But in those countries, incomes are divided much more evenly. The super-rich have a bit less than they do in the UK, but everyone else has a little more. If the total income of everyone in the UK was shared between the richest 1% and everyone else in the same way as it is in the Netherlands or Denmark, for example, 99% of us would be better off by nearly £3,000 a year per household. So, if we want to tackle poverty, we have to do something about inequality. Because higher incomes for some means lower incomes for others. Most people don't get their fair share because some are taking far more than their fair share. This is why it is essential for Britain to cut the growing pay gap between those at the very top and the rest of us. Learn more at highpaycenter.org and inequalitybriefing.org.